There were two beautiful sights yesterday in Cranberry at the Penguins practice. Unless, unless you were watching through the eyes of Barry Trotz. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates. The Penguins are gearing up for a first round against the mediocre slash slumping slash passive Islanders. If it doesn't sound like I have a lot of respect for them, I really don't. Uh, I don't like the way they play, even when they're performing at their peak. And I really don't like the way they've played of late. But the fact is, the Penguins and Islanders haven't met in quite a while. So the Penguins' 6-2 and two record against New York doesn't mean as much as if they would have faced each other recently. But here's the thing. The Islanders have only gotten worse since then. They lost Anders Lee. They replaced him with Travis Zajac and Kyle Palmieri, neither of them who've done really much of anything. They've basically stopped scoring goals, other than Matthew Barzal, who's fantastic. And of course, when the Penguins are involved, Jordan Eberle turns into like a 60-goal guy. But they don't have a, a, a ton of offensive talent. I should throw Brock Nelson into that too. Really, really good hockey player. I don't think they're all that good. But I also think that there's a really bad matchup here for New York. And it's based mostly on the Penguins' ability to almost effortlessly blow up their trap. The Islanders, you got to understand, for, any, for anybody who doesn't get into hockey's X's and O's, I, I'm going to try to lay this out as simply as I can. When the Islanders are attacking, and that does happen, when the Islanders are attacking and they have a clear loss of possession, they are instructed to back up and assume a position in the neutral zone. You know who else plays that way? Pittsburgh. For real. Watch for it. The Penguins do that too. If it's a clear loss of possession, meaning one of those, you know, where the defenseman goes behind the net and just kind of stands there and surveys the scene and then comes out one side or the other, like that, the Penguins will back off. They actually look a lot like the Islanders in that very specific circumstance. So the other team comes up, comes up ice against the Islanders. And the way that a trap works is one forward is supposed to go at the puck carrier somewhere in the neutral zone, somewhere between the blue lines, not before, not after, and force that puck carrier to move the puck either to the left or to the right of them. So picture a triangle there. That Islanders guy is forcing you to pass around him. As a result, behind that Islanders guy are two other Islanders guys forming that triangle waiting to pick off that pass. Doesn't sound all that complicated, right? Well, it isn't. And if you have the right type of players, the players who fit that system, who are fast on the counterattack, have a quick first step, they can pounce and head the other direction on a two-on-one or a three-on-two and make you pay. But there's a way to beat this. And the way to beat this is to not pass that puck. This has been true since the formation of the trap. But you don't always have the people to do this. The Penguins do. And it's a fairly long list. So I mention Mike Matheson and Brandon Tanev being back at the Penguins' practice yesterday in Cranberry as being the most significant thing that will happen this week on either side. I had been legitimately concerned that one or both would miss some or all 
of this series. Now, they haven't been announced to be in, but they're not practicing now for nothing, and they didn't make that full face shield for Matheson for nothing. These guys are trap busters. They're trap killers, and they're not alone. Brian Rust can navigate through a neutral zone trap as well as anyone in the league. Evgeny Malkin is fantastic at it. Sidney Crosby can do it. Jake Gensel isn't the fastest guy, but he'll find a way to weave through it. And I'm leaving out some others. And those who can't do it, those who can't do it, need to understand that there's a discipline involved. If you can't do it, if you're like, let's let's pick on Zach Aston Reese. Zach Aston Reese is not going to skate through anybody's neutral zone trap. But Zach Aston Reese has to be both humble and smart enough to understand that once he gets to the neutral zone, what he really needs to do is to get to the red line and chip. Turn those defensemen around, have them skate backward, get in there, hit them. Wear them down. They will hate that. Halfway through game one, they will hate that. Never mind for the duration of a best of seven. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks, generally speaking. Fubo TV is 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT&T, Sportsnet, Pittsburgh. So you can see all the Penguins and Pirates games available this summer. Right now, Fubo TV is offering our listeners of this podcast a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month. For real, go to FuboTV.com slash DK. No contracts, cancel any time, no catches. FuboTV.com slash DK for 15% off your first month. The Penguins know this. The, the Penguins have practiced this. And I don't mean practiced in practices. I mean, they've practiced it in the eight games. When you watch what the Penguins do to the Islanders and how they penetrate the neutral zone, the even more compelling visuals come in the attacking zone because they don't stop skating. They don't stop moving, whereas Trotz's Islanders do a total pack-in. And I always, anytime I, I picture the, the pack in, I think back to Team Slovenia at the Sochi Olympics when Andrzej Kopitar's dad was coaching them. And he knew they had no prayer. Like they had his son and no one else on that roster that should have been participating in an Olympics. And they're going out there facing like Russia, you know, and Malkin and Ovechkin are on the same line. And all he did meaning Kopitar's dad, was have his team backpedal and fill the area between the hash marks, the equivalent of putting the overweight kid in goal, okay? <laughs> you know, it's because they just take up more space. The Islanders do something that's a lot like that. Trotz has always believed in boxing out, basketball style, reducing the quality of the shots. Well, again, this works against teams that don't have the Penguins' speed and skill because it is hard to dissect a passive box, especially when those players are trained, and the Islanders are, to intercept those passes, to be good with their sticks, to be smart positionally. But if you're the Penguins and you're good at that sort of thing, and you have the speed to go buzzing around the New York zone, it almost at times, over these eight games that they played this year, looked too easy. And it has felt too easy. It's to the Penguins' credit that they stayed persistent, they stayed patient, and eventually worked toward their good chances and capitalized on them and beat this team way more often than not. I, I like the Penguins' chances in this series an awful lot. And I like the Penguins' chances of staying true to what I just described that much more. Listen to Brian Rust himself 
on this subject yesterday after practice? Uh, they work really hard. Um, they always guys, they always have guys uh, working back and back checking hard, and um, it's you're never really going through maybe one or two guys. You're you're going through three, four, five guys, and they're always uh, defending hard, playing hard, and I think uh, playing against teams like that is fun. It's a strange mental mix that's required here, isn't it? Because you, on one hand, have to be super fast, skate fast, think fast, but yet you're thinking primarily off of a foundation of patience. You have to keep reassuring yourself that if this crack at the wall didn't work, my next one or two or three are going to. And you have to stay confident in that. You can't get frustrated. You just have to keep taking all the cracks. The Penguins have been really, really good at this. Trotz knows this. Trotz knows that Matheson and Tanev coming back give him two more problems than he already had in what's lining up to be a pretty significant mismatch. When we come back, just one question. Time for just one question that's brought to you on this program always by the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they are committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. That does not end now that we're getting vaccinated and the end of the pandemic appears to be near. There is still a need, and if you'd like to help, you can do so by visiting Pittsburgh Food Bank. Dot org. Spell it out, pittsburghfoodbank.org. Today's question comes from Rick, who asks, Does this fan base give you pause that the day after securing the division and locking up home ice advantage, your question yesterday was about who should be fired if something goes wrong? Maybe I'm just overly optimistic and I'm willing to enjoy what the Penguins have accomplished as opposed to wondering how or why they might fail. Rick, everybody's got a different personality. Everybody. There are no exceptions to that. There are no two identical personalities. And one thing I don't make a habit of doing, uh, to put it mildly, is telling people how to feel, how to react, including fans of Pittsburgh sports teams. I understand that there's going to be trepidation entering these playoffs. I've heard that from people. I've read that from people. And a lot of it is a a little irrational. You know, a a lot of it is, you know, based on stuff that happened. I mean, the Boston thing in particular on a series that took place seven years ago with a completely different team on both sides. Uh, oh, no, can't face the Bruins because Tuka Rask did this thing in 2013. That's when stuff gets weird. But even comparing this team to last year's team that came back from a four-month layoff to face uh, a young, hungry, and eager for a surprise Montreal team, even that kind of falls flat for me. I, I don't see patterns there. I, I, I do see patterns in other situations where you lose repeatedly in the playoffs, but I'm not seeing a whole lot here. That Montreal series to me was just a case of the Penguins did, never got their legs under them. And when they did, Carey Price was there. Carey Price was really, really good. Two years ago, I thought the Penguins actually – played pretty well against the Islanders and getting swept. I also thought that the Islanders were just this unstoppable buzzsaw. I don't know that I've seen a hockey team come out that energized and with so much behind it. The speed, the size, the physicality, uh, everything that the Islanders did, including the atmosphere, Uh, up there in Uniondale. None of that's really going to be in play here. This Islanders team isn't that Islanders team. 
I mean, they still got the same fourth line, you know? Barzal's become a better player. But overall, it's just not the same group. It's not the same mindset. And for that matter, Uniondale won't be the same either. The Islanders are going to have, as they announced yesterday, 7,000 people allowed. Now, 7,000 people in that old barn is going to be unlike any atmosphere this Penguins team will have encountered in quite some time. But it's still not going to be anywhere near what it was two years ago. The place was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Out in the concourses, it was unbelievable. And I had to pass through the concourses to get to the media areas. And this was like in the intermissions, and they're out there screaming and cheering. It was, it was ridiculous. You're not going to see something like that again. So I, I get, you know, fans are going to be more influenced by the past than coaches or players will. They will almost always, meaning the participants, live in the now. That's the way they're trained. That's the way they're conditioned. It's what they talk about every single day when they show up for work is about focusing on that day's game. Not one of them is thinking to themselves about some saves that Tuka Rask made in 2013. They just don't do that. So fans are going to feel exactly how they want to, and 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 you will too, Rick. And I, I don't really think it's you know something that's worth criticizing or admonishing uh, in any form. If the Penguins lose Game One of this series, you will hear all this stuff that you just described times ten. You'll hear about Sullivan. You'll hear about Gino. You'll hear about Latang. You might even hear about Sid. Because that's that's what this is. Fans is short for fanatics. You know? There's not always rational thought being applied in every case. I appreciate the question, Rick. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one tomorrow. <laughs> Point Park University, in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, they understand there's no substitute for real-world experience and career-building connections. Their innovative curriculum engages students with distinctive experiential learning opportunities. Point Park's pioneering co-op program empowers qualified students to work in full-time, paid positions with their corporate partners while earning college credits. Visit pointpark.edu slash works to learn more. Career ready. That's the point. Point Park University. Your front door, your car, your gym locker, your gun. Safety is a habit. Learn more about how to keep guns safe and secure. Visit projectchildsafe.org.